Hey you guys, this your boy Tyson. Welcome back to my channel. So today's topic is another segment of Black Male Accountability titled Toxic Masculinity and Femininity Within Black Men. And of course this is speaking within the American Black community. Um, real quick, I do want to apologize. I'm recording this video on July 3rd at 10.43 p.m. And these hoes are starting early. These patriotic bitches. Um, so I do apologize because I know black people, sometimes we hear fireworks and <laughs> that's not the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> some of us do been through some shit. <laughs> so wait a minute. Okay. See there just one happened. One just happened right now on topic. <laughs> um, I feel like at this point we know what toxic masculinity and toxic femininity is. If you don't, you're going to have to Google that. We ain't wasting time on that. Um, but I do feel like having a healthy balance of both feminine and masculine energy is important in any child's upbringing, whether it be a boy, a girl, a transgender, non-binary, however you identify. I do feel like it's important to have an, a balance of both energies. So with that being said, um, let's first talk about... Um, a couple examples of um, toxic masculinity. We're going to go by toxic masculinity, then toxic femininity, and kind of back and forth like that. I just grabbed a couple sam examples of recent situations. So, first off, I want to start off on this trash ass Skeeter Mills man. I believe that is the name of the man who was seen hitting the black woman with a skateboard and the reasoning behind this story is because she told him no i'm not sure if it necessarily means no to sexual advances or not but nonetheless it didn't warrant this irregardless yes i said irregardless <laughs> so first off i want to touch on the art of rejection and why black men suffer from it severely um now one thing that I think that contributes to this situation is black women and black men calling these niggas kings with nothing to show for it. Um, all this black king shit, black queen, I'm going to be honest, black queen too, that irritates me. And I feel like the reason why is I feel like a lot of vocalized black pride in general often turns into black deification. You know what I'm saying? Like instead of, you know... I understand uplifting and promoting our, you know what I'm saying, best. But the thing is, we don't usually do that. We kind of just say, oh, you're black. Oh, you're a black king. Oh, you're a black queen. You know what I'm saying? We kind of just do that. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's one thing if you just graduated from college. You know what I'm saying? Okay, if black people want to go into there. Oh, black king. Oh, black queen. Okay, I understand that. That's something that's worth noting um is that's something that's worth praising you know what i'm saying but i feel like we've given the title of king and queen away so much that it's caused an arrogance and um i also want to speak on the desirability promotion more honed in on dark skin men or more men on the brown skin side because that's who receives a job, the desirability promotion light skin men aren't receiving that don't get me wrong i do understand that light skin men a certain type of light skin men is elevated over other dark skin men but we don't have the desirability promotion that y'all have and i do feel like that's also contributed to the arrogance that um a lot of dark skin men have you know what I'm saying? Even Winston Duke came out and talked about this. The one who played, um, I can't remember his name, but he was on Black Panther. And he said that black women made him feel, feel beautiful. Like he flat out said it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these black men, they pander to black women to the point that when they had the red carpet debut for Black Panther, the black men who had non-black wives were told not to bring their non-black wives. <laughs> So this is intentional, people. Before Michael B. Jordan, his stock went up after Black Panther. Before my, the, before that, nobody would have looked at Michael B. Jordan. He looks like, we're not going to do that here. But um, he's very average looking. But, you know, you threw some dreads on him. You, um, you know, gave him that grill. You know what I'm saying? Now he's Killamonger. That type of promotion can aid in not only him, but it rubs off on other black men watching the film as well. And that's not the only film that, you know what I'm saying, has given a boost of black male promotion. 
And I say black male because let's keep it real. In this community, dark-skinned black men, that's what qualifies as a black male. Most people don't think of light-skinned men when they think of black men. And I'm not saying mixed men. I'm saying light-skinned men. Like me, the product of two black parents. I have two black parents. But because I'm light-skinned, I am not what you would consider the standard of a black man. And that's just when it is what it is. Um, but the desirability promotion, I feel, has also aided in the arrogance of certain dark-skinned black men. You know what I'm saying? To the point to where it's kind of like, oh, bitch, how dare you not want me? You know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to throw all the blame on dark-skinned black men. Because there are arrogant light-skinned men as well. Chris Brown, who I just found out, has a mixed mother. I'm assuming his father is black. So on that note, I would consider him black because he's three-fourths black if his mother is mixed with black and something else. Um, the same way I would consider Barack and Michelle's kids black because they're three-fourths black, I would consider Chris Brown black. He is a light-skinned man who's come out and said some colorist shit. So I'm not trying to paint all dark-skinned black men with a brush. You know what I'm saying? And who's to say some of that promotion hasn't went to Chris Brown's head? Because let's keep it real. Chris Brown, is he's average looking too. You know what I'm saying? This is what these media people do. These people in power who are... Um, shoot, he has the same aesthetic, if you ask me, to the baby. You know what I'm saying? He looks like a light-skinned pit bull. Sorry, not trying to, you, and it's, no, it's not because he has black features. He just, to me, he looks very average looking. And for those men who say, oh, you shouldn't judge men, you a damn lie. Because if you've seen one of the quote unquote educated lame men walking down the street with what you consider to be a hot girl, you would say, how did he get that girl? So don't sit here and say that men don't judge other men. But, because that's a fucking lie looking just like if a woman is average looking and most people are average looking but this lopsided promotion has certain dark-skinned men i'm just going to be honest that's what we're here to do on black male accountability it has certain dark-skinned black men and some light-skinned men in some ways feeling like they're more than what they are and i feel like that's a problem like let's really think about this for a second when is it ever appropriate to hit a woman upside the head with a skateboard? Does that not sound psycho? Especially if she simply told you no, I don't care what the situation was. Does that not sound narcissistic? We got to start being real about some of the men in our community. And I don't know if y'all are trying to be some special unicorns. Like you want to keep the bad men the status quo so that way you can think that you look good but no taking out the trash which is a part of black male accountability is actually going to create a better look for us as a collective so if you're feeling offended maybe some of these things that i'm speaking about are you may be guilty of are maybe things that you may be guilty of so maybe it's time to look in the mirror i don't i don't understand why calling this shit out is wrong but nonetheless, um, I've never cared to be right. <laughs> so at any rate, um, also, I want to note that the bold fact of recording this act and having your face all in the video, it tells us about the current climate of black women's safety and also the relationship between black men and black women. Because I can promise you, Skeeter Mills, as gangster and thug as he want to portray himself to be, he ain't finna run up on Becky and do this shit. He not finna hit a white girl in the face with a skateboard. And that's just on the fucking truth. Um, real quick, um, for the quote-unquote good black man, who, um, there are uh, cops are searching. The cops are searching for this nigga. So um, before we defund the police, do all this shit, let's go ahead and hand them over one more. So there's the picture right there. You said you wanted to be a good black man. You know anything? Go ahead and reach out. Reach out now. And record him swinging up side, swinging up her up, or swinging upside her head with a skateboard. So you didn't incriminate yourself in that. So that's not snitching. That's called taking out the fucking trash. But nonetheless, um, if you are the quote unquote good black man that you claim to be, and you have any information that can help the police, please visit my community tab, and that post will be there. So now let's move into some toxic femininity. Um, these videos will come back up, but um, you have a video here of the baby and black youngster 
who are apparently pretty. Um, the baby has named himself the prettiest chocolate nigga alive. And Black Youngster is apparently dubbing himself the name Sexual Chocolate. Um, again, I feel like this promotion has went to the heads of a lot of people. Now, the baby, I can say he's very charming. Uh, his interviews, I can see why women gravitate to him. I don't have no problem admitting that as a heterosexual man. I can, man, I can see that. But he's still average looking to me. Um, and Black Youngster, well... We ain't even going to go there. But nonetheless, as you can see in this video, um, and we will be talking about this later in the um, strained relationship between dark skin men and light skin men because they actually reference light skin men in this video, um, which you see that often from dark skin men. You know what I'm saying? It's always a comparison and a competition between us, and it's very telling of how insecure you are because i don't i don't see this on the reverse i don't see it a lot especially not from celebrity black men or celebrity black light skin men but um we can get into that on that video um that video is gonna be interesting um but yeah the words pretty and sexual chocolate like if you're not a stripper a male stripper you shouldn't uh-uh that's just uh-uh I, I don't think that would fly if drake did that Maybe that's just me going and maybe I'm reaching, but I don't think that would fly. Drake did that. Granted, he's mixed, but he is light skinned. That's the point I'm making. But nonetheless, let's go on ahead to the next example, which would be ASAP Rocky. All right. So in this example, ASAP Rocky is on a Hot 97 interview. And um, basically, he said he's a bad bitch. He's pretty and he's the bad bitch and uh, you need to bring him flowers and take him on a date. The I'm assuming at this point, multimillionaire rapper, maybe not multimillionaire, but he probably at least let's let's go ahead and look up this net worth and be a little um, gold digger real quick. Let me stop. <laughs> ASAP Rocky net worth. I know it had to go up since he's with the Kardashians. He has an estimated net worth of, oh, there we go, $10 million. So he has an estimated net worth of $10 million, and he wants you to take him out on a date <laughs> and bring him flowers. Now, I touched on sugar baby politics before in one of my videos. I Y'all know what I rap about. I actually have a song coming out <laughs> that discusses um, sugar baby politics as far as the male side of it or the um male side of sugar babies but um and you know that's all throughout my music but he's not talking about that he's he's telling you he's the prize he's actually on some role reversal shit where you need to bring him flowers you need to pick him up and take him on the date and pay for the food that's what he's on it's one thing like i said in, in the um uh, broken hypergamy video It's one thing if you know he was like You know rapping about some sugar mama shit But he's not You know what I'm saying he's rapping about the same shit That everybody else is rapping about And he's telling you Even though he's got the millions He's worth 10 million dollars He wants you to take him on a date And bring him flowers Now he might have been joking I highly doubt it But it's not about whether he was joking or not It's all in all not a good look so next up, let's move into another example of toxic masculinity. And this example is actually, I did this video a couple weeks back. The men who threw the black woman in the trash can, or let's call her black lady, because if I'm not mistaken, she's 17. Um, real quick, I want to note that we need to stop equating the inner city to gutter rat behavior. There are Pookies and Ray Rays in the suburbs too. And I'm tired of people trying to use the hood as a scapegoat. You know what I'm saying? To say, oh, those are those black people. You sound no better than the black people who get in these upper echelon places or the higher um, upper middle class places and, you know, start acting like brand new. You know what I'm saying? So I don't like when people do that shit. Um, now, moving on from there though, I did see one black man in the comment section sort of stand up for the black girl but it kind of came off more in a way of coddling the black men like 
it gets to a point to where all this, uh uh-uh, we need to, I I get what everybody's saying with where the OGs at, but let's keep it real. The OGs didn't have the game all the way together either. You know what I'm saying? The OGs were doing young bullshit when they was younger too. So all this, the OG talk, you know what I'm saying? Even if there are OGs there, because a lot of people say ain't no OGs there. We all know how that goes in the inner city, for lack of better terms. (laughs) But I get where people are coming from with that. But let's keep it real. The OGs didn't have it all the way together, too. There's a lot of older people in the black community who feel like you should respect them based off of the fact of their age. And that's not fucking true. Um, now, when you leave some generational wealth, you can gain my respect then. <laughs> but it seems like a lot of us don't want to do that. So, But nonetheless, that's another talk for another time. We'll talk. We'll, 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 I'm going to try to carve out a video for that. Um, but... With that being said, I feel like the way that the black man handled the men on the video in the comment section, it was more so like kind of babyish. It wasn't really like taking them to task. It was like, let's get on the phone. Let's talk because this is not the answer. And I feel like that may be warranted in a different situation. But in this situation, this was directly malice, evil. Like, they knew what they were doing. And for them to try to come out and spin this story that she was messing with a minor, she's 17. Granted, 17 and 15 is pushing it. But let's keep it real. If this was a black boy with a black girl, black men would have defended him to the day. No, no, no. Like, and I'm not even saying with the trash can shit. I'm just saying in general. Because that's what this community does. This community is so fucking black male identified. It's so, it's so fucking twisted. It doesn't even make sense. Y'all still defend R. Kelly. What the fuck? (laughs) Like, seriously. What the fuck? All them girls and fast-ass girls, they knew what they was doing. Yeah, because you had all the answers at age 15, right? But at any rate, let me relax. (laughs) So, nonetheless, his response response was kind of a little too gentle for me. Um, And again, I want to note the bold fact of recording the act and them having all their faces in the video, especially with one of them, like he's on fucking probation. And now he's crying to people, stop snitching on me to prompt my PO officer. Really, nigga? You hopped your dumb ass up on the camera and with your face in the camera. Bitch, we in Corona. You got every excuse in the book to be maxed up. But you decided to come on here and tell us who you was in publicly. You could have posted that shit if you wanted to be an attention whore. Because that's what they wanted to do. They wanted attention. You could have had one of your homies that's not on probation post that shit up. But you better believe if you uh, got a PO officer and you doing some bullshit like that, people's going to snitch on you. They sure is. So at any rate, um, but again, them having the balls to post that tells you the climate of black men or not black men, but black women. And it highlights the tension in between our relationship in, in between our relationship dynamics within the community. And also, again, I want to note the art of rejection for black men and how we have not mastered this shit because he then tried to come out. The rappers, one of the rappers of the video, one of the failed ass rappers because I looked that shit up. It's fucking ass. But he said, oh, black lives matter. But y'all didn't support support my music. So. That's why you throwing black bitches, uh, girls in the trash can? Sorry, I may as well say bitches because that's how y'all viewed them anyways. Y'all viewed them as black bitches. If she was a white girl, she would be a lady. But, you know, we ain't going to talk about that. We'll get to that on another video. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, because somebody didn't like your trash ass music, really? And if you thought your music was doing bad in the dislikes and the likes before, oh, nigga, you didn't set yourself up now. <laughs> But at any rate, um, let's move on to um, a toxic masculinity example, a femininity example. Um, The prize lawyer boy. (laughs) So this story trended maybe about a month or two ago, and I've seen a couple people in the black sector of YouTube pick up on it. Now, um, I'm never going to look like college. I'm never going to sit here and act like college is a simple thing to go through. Um, Anybody who decides to... decides to pursue education past high school you're brave you're brave i will give you that i did as well i went to college graduated 2018 culinary arts so um i do want to give this boy or this man his props for pursuing school after high school now i don't feel college is for everybody but if that's what he 
feels in his heart that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. However, um, his little online spiel was a bit much. It was it was doing a bit much for somebody who had first of all failed the bar multiple times. And usually when you celebrate, you know what I'm saying, passing, like how do I equate this? Um him getting into law school, a lawyer school, whatever whatever he was celebrating, because it happened so long ago, I can't even remember exactly what he was celebrating. But him what he was celebrating, it was more so something that he should have personally celebrated with his friends like you know what i'm saying let's go out to eat or i mean granted corona was going on at this time i think so let's get some takeout and go to the house and chill and you know pop some bottles it should have been more so like that you know what i'm saying like he didn't pass the bar that's something that you post online if you get what i'm saying like you know what i'm saying you have your um excuse me you have your awards and your um what's the word i'm looking for here, I know a perfect way how to describe it. So he's basically throwing a first place award party for getting a, partic- a participation trophy. That's pretty much what he did. Now, um, I've actually looked at some you know, tweets of lawyers, and it's not uncommon for them to fail the bar a couple times before they pass it. So nobody's demonizing him for not making it. We're saying the... Um, praise that you're looking for is not matching what you did. You know what I'm saying? Now, had he had passed it, hey, I would have gave him that. Um, uh, some of the stats that he laid out, though, I feel like really revealed how low the bar is set for us as black men. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be given more than just, okay, you don't have no kids and you're not in jail. You don't have no record. Like, and he listed some other things, um, but still, it just... Eh, the bar is not set high for us, and I feel like that's bad. <laughs> um, I also want to state that he was giving me very much like special unicorn vibes. You know, I brought that up earlier in the video, and he stated that he's the prize. If I'm not mistaken, he said that directly. So, again, given that ASAP Rocky T's a bit effeminate. Um, the woman is the prize in the situation. You're competing for the woman. The woman's not competing for you. That's not how patriarchy works. Not true patriarchy. I don't know what type of shit y'all are on. But, yeah. Nonetheless, moving on from there, let's move into Lil Boosie. And, of course, this is going to be toxic masculinity. Um, first off, I want to bring up the massage noir and the way that he speaks about his baby's mother. It's very disturbing. Um, I also want to speak on the fact... Um, that and lovely T, she has a video on that. I don't know if she still has it up, but um, it was more so like I think he was threatening to kill her brother, I think, and then he ended up dying. It was some weird shit going on, but she has an in depth video about that. And I think he's going in the video, he's going off on his baby's mother, and it was very eerie to hear him speak about her and and, and also the way that things happen, but nonetheless. Um, that was a while back. I can't remember, but definitely go just type in Lovely T Lil Boosie um, on YouTube. Um, next, the way he keeps attacking D Wade and over lies at that. I have not heard Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle come out and say they're going to allow Zaya to get a sex change. So I'm, if you're going to comment on stuff, if you're going to be blogger Boosie, I'm going to need you to speak correctly on shit. They never came out, at least when he made that video, they never claimed, came out and said, he will have a sex change. We're going to get him a sex change. They never said that. Now, I do believe that it's possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's not of age, but let's keep it real. They're celebrities. They have privilege. Um, black celebrities, yes, but they're still celebrities. They have privilege. Um, you throw enough money anyways, anybody's way, even if you're not a celebrity, if you're just a regular, you know, low-key millionaire, if you throw somebody enough money, they'll do something unorthodox. So I'm not saying they're not going to get him the sex change. I'm just saying Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle never confirmed that. And y'all know, well, I mean, y'all don't know. I haven't been as vocal about that situation. I don't necessarily agree with the way that Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle have went about that situation. But I'm not going to go out of my way to bash them like Lil Boosie has. 
And I also want to note that his obsession with homosexuality and the LGBTQ plus whatever whatever letter they're on, I'm not trying to be funny, but um, his obsession with the LGBTQ plus community is like very weird. It's, it's very strange. Um, like I kind of understood it sadly when it was just going at gay people. Like, you know, when he said the shit about the cartoons um, and all that other shit. But once he started attacking D Wade and the whole, you know what I'm saying? Once he moved from the G to the T in LGBT, it was like, okay, like did something happen to you in prison? Like what the fuck? You were a little too invested as a heterosexual man in gay shit really and truly or transsexual transgender shit whatever whatever you know what i'm saying so um and that was also one of the reasons he found what he did with his kids pimping them out as an appropriate reaction he said that his kids are not going to ever be gay he keeps them watching straight porn this shit is like i can't i can't i can't and you still don't have black men defending this And no, it's not just going to be the Pookies and Ray Rays. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, And also the rape culture aspects of that situation are very disgusting. Um, And I feel like we don't look at men as sexual victims. And I do feel like that plays a part in it. But if a parent is telling you they are smutting out their kids to grown ass people, I don't see why CPS is knocking on that door. I don't. I'm disgusted by that situation. I, I, I side-eye anybody that supports him moving on from this point. So with that being said, now that we've gotten all the examples of toxic masculinity and toxic femininity out of the way, or at least some recent examples, um, let's move on to some solutions. But real quick before we get into that, um, this is black male accountability, so we are going to have to take some accountability right here. I do want to acknowledge that while the white media does try to emasculate the image of black men, we also have to take responsibility for our roles in pushing that very same narrative, both indirectly and directly. You know what I'm saying? I spoke about um, positive and negative or corrective and incorrect promotion of unambiguous black men or black women. And all those black male comedians who, let's just keep it real, I'm just going to be honest, they more so on the brown skin than dark skin side, but we ain't going to talk about that. <clears throat> but all them stuff hating ass niggas got up there and made um, a mockery of dark skinned black women and the stereotypical black woman who, let's just keep it real, nobody's thinking about light skinned women when they're watching Respucia or Big Mama or... Um, Medea, they're thinking about brown skin and dark skin women. You know what I'm saying? But in you doing that, trying to coon for a dollar, because it's cooning, it is, it's cooning. Don't get me wrong, Medea, I can still laugh at it, it's still funny. Um, The last movie that he made, the Medea's Funeral, that movie was funny as fuck. I might rewatch it. But with that being said, it's still not a good look. And uh, as a community-minded man, you realize if you are truly community minded, that everybody is a reflection of everybody. So it doesn't matter if you individually don't throw on a wig and a dress and make a mockery of brown skin and dark skin women. That doesn't matter. You realize that other men doing that is a reflection of you. And even if you didn't do it, let's keep it real. A lot of black people, Tyler Perry made a lot of money off of black people. Let's let's find out how much diary of a mad black woman pulled in. Excuse me. And yes, black people. I'm saying black people because um, black people, men and women, watch this shit. So let's let's keep that all the way real. Diary of a mad black woman. What I need to put grossed. Opening weekend, twenty one million dollars. Twenty one million dollars, y'all. That's the metrics broken down. $21 million in the opening weekend. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure white people watch Tyler Perry, especially Medea. They love to see that shit. They love to masculinize our women. So I'm sure they tuned in. That's what these white supremacists love. However, black people tuned into this shit too. And you can't lie because some of the biggest movies we have are the same type of archetype. Big Mama, Big Mama 2. If there was a Big Mama 3, I'm not sure. But it would have had to been that too. Jamie 
Foxes, Wanda Sykes, you know what I'm saying? Martin and Shanene. We all laughed at the shit. There's, and it's okay to admit that you did. But the problem is now we know better. So we should want to do better. Because it's not a good look on black women. But it also is not a good look on us. When a man is sitting here in a wig and a dress. Negatively portraying his women. So now I want to go into just a few after effects and aftermaths of what continuing this process will and can potentially do. So there's hostile masculinity, for one, it allows the constant abuse of black women by black men, both reported and unreported, to go unpunished because, let's keep it real, we're living in a white man's world. And although their mission is to keep us down as a people, if we don't even respect our women, why the fuck do you expect them to? Going back to an earlier point, they seen so much of us making fun of our black women on television that they had enough balls to create a movie called Laquisha. And if y'all don't know about that, go look that shit up. It's a, we ain't even gonna go into it. We're not gonna waste time on it. But just know they're watching. They see what we're doing. Next up, let's go into, um, or next up, um, allowing the Tosti Miller toxic masculinity to continue festering also allows massage and war to continue on existing within our community and it also continues to influence empty black patriarchy and excuse me to define empty black patriarchy like i said in the broken hypergamy video you have to give black women something to submit to um if these men feel like just because they're quote-unquote black gangs in my Paris Milan voice. <laughs> um, if they feel like just because they're black men, they're entitled to this and that, um, just for mildly existing, that's really it. Nothing, nothing else. Not providing, not doing anything else. Um, which is a form of toxic masculinity. You feel like just because you're a man, you're entitled to certain things. Um, that'll continue the, pro- the pattern of empty black patriarchy. These men feeling like they don't have to do shit. You should want to submit to them just based off the fact that they that nigga, really and truly. Let's just paint it how it is. AKA the man, AKA the men. Um, so now let's move on to toxic femininity. If we allow this pattern to go on for one, it creates more men, beta men, which are less likely to build or protect our women, which is utterly conducive to nothing as far as progress within our community. It also destroys chances of true patriarchy within the black community, because as I said, um, you want women to submit to you, you have to give them something to submit to. And a lot of these black women, granted you have black women who they'll, They've been conditioned to do this, but they, they'll settle for anything. They'll settle for anything. But these black women, they're watching women like Chrissy and women like Crystalline, the pink pill. And they're, they're learning how to level up. And they're learning to not accept just anything. And I think that's good because we as men shouldn't want to just give out anything. If all you got to offer is dick in your mama's couch, why would I tell a black woman to hold out for your ass? Really? No, nah, we ain't doing it. Um, so we're going to have to step up to the plate. Because black women been doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Not saying they're perfect. We could talk about weaves and all that shit. Well, no, nah, we can't talk about that on my channel because we're men here. You can talk about that on the other Hotep's channels. Or the uh, the Hotep's channels because I'm not a Hotep. Um, I would never claim that. But... um. Yeah, um, the true patriarchy. Sorry, we went off a little bit everywhere. But yeah, it destroys chances of the true patriarchy. Um, It also lessens the chance of black women ending up with black men collectively. Because like I said, black women, they're, they're learning their worth. And a lot of us, we're either too divested or we're just comfortable where we're at. Um, We need to step it up. We need to step it up. And if you're doing the work, that's good. If you're putting in the work, that's good. I see you. Congratulations. Continue building. 
and protecting your community i just seen a video that i'm gonna insert right here all right you guys i couldn't find the video but it happened in new orleans if i'm not mistaken and it was some black men posted up with guns and they were basically explaining, explaining to these white people that um we're here to protect that's what we're here to do um and i think something had happened in their city it was crawling around on social media today um Sorry, that's all the context I have because I wasn't able to watch the full video and I can't find the shit now. So I spent 40 minutes looking, but I couldn't find it. Not the full version of it. So at any rate, shout out to those men, though. That's the type of radical movement it's going to take. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to undo 400 years of damage. It's going to take a lot of effort, effort on our part. Um, so now moving into some solutions. First off check yourself when interacting with black women make sure your tone is right your diction is right and even when facing rejection take it like a man that's that's really all i can say you know what i'm saying um next up again learn to take no for an answer it's not the end of the world if that girl don't want to fuck you or be your boy your girlfriend it's not the end of the world and I see this a lot. We see it in a lot of our quote unquote favored hood, you know what I'm saying? Black struggle love and black movies in general. Um, not trying to rope them all into the guise of struggle love, but a lot of them are, let's just be honest. You know, all the quote unquote movies that you're supposed to watch if you're a black person. Um, the girl turns them down and they then they hit them with the, oh, fuck you, bitch. I didn't want you anyways. Your friend looked better or whatever. That shit happens in real life. Whether or not you want to admit it, it does. I've seen it firsthand. It's fucking pathetic. But, um, which brings me to my next point of solution. Check your friends when they exude toxicity of either trait, whether it's masculine or feminine, or simply remove yourself from, the pres from their presence. I'm not going to sit here and necessarily fault the people in the videos because i understand peer pressure peer pressure is a thing you know what i'm saying now at the end of the day they still chose to um participate in you know the skateboard situation and the um whole trash can situation but i also understand okay it's you versus anywhere from seven to 30 15 niggas it was a lot of niggas in that damn trash can video but i can honestly say my ass wouldn't have spoke up you know what i'm saying if i'm a part of the crew granted i wouldn't be a part of these i wouldn't hang with these people anyways because birds of a feather fall out together but let's say they just decided today all of a sudden let's start harassing people and throwing people in trash cans and she was the first victim i'm not gonna necessarily speak up either i'm just gonna show them that silence is the best way you know what i'm saying to react to situations like that you know what i'm saying let me silently show you because let's keep it real if you react to that situation there's strength in numbers you might get your ass thrown in the trash can you know what i'm saying and i'm not you i'm not here to play semantics i'm just saying i can understand being silent in that situation now if you still choose to hang out with those people after they do fucked up shit then that's on you. You know what I'm saying? But, um, and that's indicative of who you are as a person. But I believe when people show you who they are, believe it. Next up, um, be aware of who you support financially and what they stand for. And um, uh, speaking in terms of a lot, um, majority black men, you know what I'm saying? Their stances on colorism, featureism, texturism, all that stuff. I brought up Chris Brown earlier. He said some colorist shit. Black bitches with the good hair. Misogynistic shit, too. Um, I don't know why y'all still rocking with him after. I mean, I was good after the whole Rihanna shit. Now I'm not going to sit here and drag him for Rihanna shit or the shit with Rihanna because she done done songs with him since then. They've performed together, if I'm not mistaken, since then. So I'm not going to sit here and be more mad at it than she was. But I'm also not going to elevate him and, you know, oh, yeah, Chris Brown. You know. Nah, I haven't heard an album in a long ass time. So, um, nonetheless, when we have the power, we need to promote effectively. You know what I'm saying? Um, take your image into your own hands. White supremacy is going to do what it can do to destroy it at the end of the day. But that's why I appreciate people like the YouTuber Chrissy, who, you know what I'm saying? She says, no, I'm not going to take this piss poor, um, 
promotion of dark skinned women. I'm not gonna, I don't have to take that shit laying down. And she's putting in the work for it. So if you don't like the image that you see of black men, put in the work for it and take out the trash when necessary. Um, and let's, let's all remember Harriet Tubman. Like there's this meme and I don't, I don't, I don't think I still have it on my phone, but it was perfect. It's perfectly, if it's perfectly. And it says, I am not going to argue with people that Harriet Tubman would have shot. So we need to keep in mind that for every, um, no name and every J Cole, there is a Ben Carson and a Candace Owens. So you can't save all black people. And that's all I'm going to leave off on on there. I think that says enough for itself. Um, Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. If there's any examples of toxic masculinity or toxic femininity that you can think of, y'all let me know. I've definitely spoke on this before as far as toxic femininity with the whole Snoop Dogg being so worried about what Ari Lennox does with her hair and black men in general doing that shit. So I've spoken on that before, I'm, and I've actually covered toxic masculinity before too. Not so much directly the lens, or in the directly in the lens of black the black community, but you know what I'm saying. Um, y'all, let me know down below if there's any examples that you can think of. Let me know if there's any topics y'all want me to cover, and I will get back to y'all on the next video. Peace out.